Today I got a video for you on the 15 tools that I think every homeowner should have in his or her toolbox or whatever kind of storage device you want to use. Um, this is for beginners, experts, anyone in there in between, just to get an idea of what things you should definitely have on hand if you're a homeowner um, or just someone that wants to get into fixing stuff. Here are the things that I think everyone should have. And keep in mind that the tools that I'm sharing today, I'm not sponsored on any of them, just thought I'd share my experience, so don't get too caught up in the brands or the looks or where I got it from. I might comment if I do like a specific tool or brand, but ultimately, totally your choice. Buy the best you can or one that you've had experience with and enjoyed. And other than that, let's jump into it. 15 things that I think every homeowner should have in their toolbox. So of the things inside my toolbox, I'm going to show you the 15 today that I think are the most necessary to have as a beginner or if, you know that any homeowner should have really and I'm going to also put some links in the cards above as I go through these different tools to share a video with you that I did kind of use that tool um, I don't know if I have a video of every tool that I'm going to show here um, being shown in the video but the ones that I have used I'm going to share them with you and hopefully you can see them in action all right, so let's start with number one here on the list. Now keep in mind, none of these are in a specific order, just the 15 that came to my mind as I was doing this. Number one, I would say, is a multi-bit screwdriver. Of course, you can have separate Phillip heads, separate flathead screwdrivers, Torx, yada, 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 nut drivers, but if we're gonna keep it simple and sweet for you know, a homeowner toolbox, one that you don't wanna you know, maybe spend a lot on tools, just have them you know, bare minimum, this I'd say was a, is the definite um, one to have on, first on the list. You want one of these multi-bit screwdrivers because it can be your Phillips head, it can be a nut driver. On the other side, if you pull it out of the sleeve here, on the other side, you, just, you can see we have a Torx head. And on the reverse of that, we have another uh, size of Torx. So right there, you have four screwdrivers all in one. And if we take our little shaft here, one end can pop out, and here we have some Robertson, or some square. So right there, there's six, and then the other ones are these nut ends here. These hex heads that can be used as nut drivers. And that becomes so handy, maybe when you have some machine screws uh, that you're needing to pull out for, maybe on a furnace filter, or maybe you're some, working on something else. It comes so handy sometimes to have a nut driver to get those screws out. And then you can, you know, interchange the bits, put them where you need them to go. And that is 10 tools just in one little thing. Now, of course, you're going to have to replace the bits. It's not going to last forever. But man, to have 10 tools just in one little screwdriver, I think that is money well spent. Number two. Probably second important to a good screwdriver is a good flashlight. A lot of times you'll be working in dark places, whether it's on a car, underneath the hood, um, maybe it's underneath the sink in a confined space, maybe it's under a crawl space. You want a good light. There's nothing that uh, is better than having a good bright flashlight. So as you can see with this one, and look at that. This one's from Harbor Freight. Flexes up and down. It has a magnetic base, which makes it really nice. So you can put it on somewhere, have it stick, and then have that light flashing on it. So you can bo use both hands. I was going to say you don't need a flashlight because most people have their smartphones. But man, you really want a phone that you can, or a light that you can just have sit down. You don't have to, you know, try and find an angle with your uh, phone and just have that flash in the direction you want. And you want it to have a lot of brightness. Another cheap alternative is one of these other ones. I mean, they're nice because they can stand up by themselves. They're magnetic. That way you can have either a beam like that or just have it sit like that. So again, definitely next on my list is a good light that you can use when you're working on stuff and hopefully one that's hands-free. You don't want to be taking up one of your hands to uh, be working on something if you can have your light shine on without having your hands in the way. All right, I'd say number three here is a good pair of pliers. Now, I personally like having pliers that are slip joint pliers, water pump pliers, uh, you know, channel locks, whatever you want to call these. 
Um, I'm not keen on a certain brand. I actually have the Harbor Freight version of this, and also because you can see the Nipex here. And yeah, I really like having these sorts of pliers. They're great for working on round things, like I guess some pipes you can't really, it's not a substitute for a pipe wrench, but like maybe taking off water supply lines for your dishwasher, toilets. Uh, even these can work as an extension of your hand. So let's say you're working on something and you want to hold it without you know, actually using your hands, you know, this is an extension of your hand. Or maybe you want to drive a nail, you can actually put the nail in here, hammer away at it, and you know, protect your hands. So definitely a good pair of pliers. And I would say specifically, the difference between these two is with this one, you know, you have to ratchet, and then you have to use both hands to kind of tighten and hold as you twist or loosen. The nice thing is with these kind of pliers is you can adjust and use just, you know, only a portion of your hand to push or to loosen. So I definitely like these uh, pliers, but I would say I definitely use both. Um, so definitely invest in a good pair of uh, water pump pliers. Definitely next on the list. Fourth on the list, I would say, is a good utility knife and some extra blades because you'll be cutting things, whether it's drywall, um, maybe some insulation on some wiring, uh, you know, opening boxes. A, a good sharp blade, multi-tool uh, blade is something that you want to have. These are two ones that I have. Personally, I, would, I like one like this where you don't have to worry about this head bending back and forth as you're cutting stuff. You don't want to have to worry about getting injured, but it's nice that it does collapse like that. So yeah, definitely invest in a good utility blade, something that you don't have to worry about, you know, collapsing and cutting yourself or whatnot. Good for cutting things, opening things, um, scribing things. A good utility knife is something that you want to have in your toolbox. All right, next, I would say pretty simply, you want a hammer. Um, you decide what kind you want, whether you want just a simple claw one like this, or you want a ball peen, or whatever. I would say if you're just driving nails, maybe you know taking out a couple nails here and there, maybe getting off some rusted or some, you know, just giving something a little bit of a coercion, just a simple hammer is something that you cannot substitute. So definitely get a hammer. Another simple tool, but definitely irreplaceable, is a level. And you can get, you know, small ones like these little torpedo levels, um, ones that just show when something is level. But I would say get one that also shows plumb, so you can see if things are straight up and down. If they're level, you can check the horizontal. This is great not only if you want to make sure a picture is you know, properly uh, hung and is level, but also just to make sure that pipes have fall to them. Same thing with gutters. If you want to you know, scribe a straight edge. You know, this tool has so many uses more than just hanging a picture. So definitely invest in a level. Something small is you know, fine to start out with. Of course, if you're doing bigger projects like you know, doing a fence or whatnot, you're gonna need something bigger. But just for the simple projects, like maybe some simple plumbing, hanging pictures, some simple carpentry, this is something nice to have. Next, I debated putting this one on here, but if we're keeping this a little bit more tailored toward maybe some beginners and some newer homeowners, definitely a stud finder. Um, honestly, there's more accurate sometimes uh, ways to find studs, but if you wanna you know, find a stud so you can hang a picture, maybe mount something, a good stud finder is the way to go. Sometimes you can't replace just using your knuckle, listening for those hollow and uh, solid sounds, but Sometimes it's nice to have a tool that can help you out. All right, next tool here is kind of a category. I thought I'd give you the options to, you know, kind of think over and see what's best for your needs, is electrical testing equipment. So here we have some non-contact voltage pens and uh, outlet receptacle tester and a multimeter. They all serve their purpose. They're all ways to roughly test if there's electricity pre present. The one that will do the most for you, give you the best bang for your buck, I would say, is the multimeter. It does require a little bit more knowledge, but it's not something that someone couldn't learn or become comfortable with. And it has so many uses, both inside and outside the home, that I would say, if you can, spend the money and get uh, a nice multimeter. Otherwise, uh, a good, I don't wanna use the word substitute, but I guess fallback 
is using some non-contact voltage pens. That way you can at least test if there's electricity before you work on things and or an outlet receptacle tester so you can make sure things are wired correctly and see if there's electricity going to the thing you're working on. So I'll let you choose of the three. I would say if you can, definitely go with the multimeter because it can do all of these things. Um, uh, receptacle tester is nice because you can easily detect if it's wired incorrectly or not. Um, and a voltage pen is, non-contact voltage pen is a super easy way to test if there's voltage before you work on something. All right, next thing here on the list, and I guess in, while we're talking about electricity, I would say is a good pair of wire strippers. Now, if you're working on electrical, um, I, you know, at some point you may, and honestly, electrical work is not too difficult. There are some things that are a little bit more uh, advanced, but ultimately when it comes to replacing an outlet, you know, replacing a GFCI outlet, uh, maybe just changing some things up, a good pair of wire strippers is really nice. And I personally think a little bit irreplaceable. You can use a t utility knife to cut back the sheathing. But man, a good pair of wire strippers to strip away that sheathing is so much nicer. So I would definitely say invest in these. It can help you with situations with your car and obviously electrical situations within your home. Next tool here I would say is irreplaceable is a cock gun. I think the saying is true, uh, DIYer is just as good as his skill set, but sometimes a little cock and paint makes that DIYer DIY what they ain't. So definitely invest in a cock gun. I don't think there's any better way to you know, lay a bead of caulking on something than using a cock gun. So definitely invest in a cock gun. I don't think it needs to be anything fancy. This was like six bucks from Lowe's. It's plastic. It's probably not going to last forever. But nothing like having a cock gun to lay a bead of caulk or adhesive or whatnot. So definitely get yourself a cock gun and put that in your toolkit. All right, the next thing here, unsurprisingly, is a tape measure. Now, depending on the kind of stuff you're gonna be doing around your home, I mean, you don't need to get anything too long, like major, but I would say tape measures are a little bit on the pricier side, so if you wanna buy once, cry once, definitely get a good tape measure. I know Stanley Fat Maxes are kind of the, the go-to for a lot of people, so, you know, do some research, play around with some tape measures when you go to the store, see which ones you like the best. Honestly, I use this one a lot in my toolbox. It's, you know, nothing fancy, but, you know, I use it for making measurements, making sure things are centered if they're going around the house, uh, you know, checking sorts of things like that. This one's much bulkier, much bigger. I don't use it too often. So I would say, yep, a good tape measure is definitely something else to have in the toolbox just to help you out when you want to center things, make sure things are away based on code, all those sorts of things. All right, the next uh, tool here is a little bit of a cheat, but I figured there's most of the ways that you can buy this tool is it coming in a form of a set. Next thing I would invest in is a simple socket set because you know, with a lot of furniture, even some car repair, some basic car repairs, you need some sockets. And you know, this is a very cheap set. I assume it's probably an old Harbor Freight set, but you know, it's got its metric here on the bottom and it's standard here on the top. And that's honestly a good start because you know, if you're working on some things around the house, a socket set is so nice to have. And a little bit more updated version one that I have that I honestly use frequently is this DeWalt set. The nice thing about it is that it comes with our, you know, our metric and standard sockets, quarter inch drive here, but also we have um, a nut driver and you know, some bits here. So this, is, this honestly takes the place of a lot of the tools that I've already discussed and it's nice and confined into one little box. So if you can, definitely find one of these sets. I don't think it's worth it as much to buy one ratchet and buy the couple sockets that you need. If anything, you know, you can buy one of these for like 20 or 30 bucks and you got tons of tools all in one. So definitely invest in a socket set. Helpful again for, you know, furniture, some plumbing stuff, some even electrical, and of course those repairs that uh, can be done with on your car. Lastly, um, in regards to kind of sets of things, is a Allen keys. These are super helpful for plumbing. If you you know go biking, 
again, furniture, sometimes even car repair, takes Allen keys. And I would get a set of metric and standard. They're very cheap to buy. I, I know these are Harbor Freight sets and I love that they're on this little ring here so that you don't lose them. I don't like the ones where you have to take out the individual Allen key. Sometimes you need them, but I personally like these the best because you know they're simple for throwing them in the toolbox, make sure I don't lose them, and then you know I can easily test. All right, here's this size. I think this key is gonna fit in there. Nope, I need something smaller. Can easily follow down the line. So get yourself some metric and standard Allen keys to help with a lot of different things. All right, another one here is something I debated a lot about, but one that I have used pretty frequently in a lot of different scenarios. And I would say that's a putty knife. Now, there's a lot out there. There's plastic ones, um, there's you know metal ones, there's cheapo plastic uh, stubby ones. Um, what I use these for is you know cleaning off, I've used actually this one a lot to clean the refrigerator, to scrape off you know gunk from old gaskets. Plastic one really comes in handy more than you would expect just for cleaning purposes. Um, a lot of the times I think we get so caught up in the need for tools that we forget sometimes that we need other tools to really help us clean and prep surfaces because that's also a big part of this, a, a job is making sure that the preparation work goes in there. And I think a good scraper, putty knife, however you want to see it is a good way to get you to that, um, to that mean. So definitely think about a set of putty knives. I know a lot of them, especially the plastic ones, will come in a huge set. I mean, if you're doing drywall repair and patches, it's up to you if you want to you know, stick with plastic. I know usually the metal ones are a little bit more robust and a little bit easier to work with than these plastic ones, but you know, I have patched drywall with uh, these plastic ones. So keep that in mind if you can find a set. You can even sometimes find them at like Goodwill or garage sales. Get a couple of these just to have on hand because they can do so much more than just patch drywall. All right, I think we're at 15 here. So the last tool, you know, again, there's so many tools to pick from, hard to narrow it down to one. Um, so what I thought is I kind of would do a, a, a miscellaneous tool. So depending on what you like to do, whether you like to work on cars, or you like to work on carpentry, or you like to, you know, if there's a specific trade or a specific thing that you really feel comfortable doing, I would say, you know, watch some videos and see what things you feel comfortable with and invest in a tool that um, is kind of specific to that discipline or that job. So for example, one thing that I really enjoy doing um, is working on cars. So something that's kind of instrumental in working on cars is an LVD2 scanner. And that's not something that every homeowner is going to need to do. In fact, you can go to any parts store, auto parts store, and they can scan your car for free. But I like, you know, being able to have this tool on hand at the ready. So in case I want to know, be aware, do some Googling, do some research, I can do this all myself. And this tool, I think, only costs 20 or 30 bucks. Is it as great as a snap-on or a more expensive tool? No, but it does the job. But let's say you know, you're know you not into automotive work, you just kinda wanna you know, buy another specialty tool. What if you like working on HVAC systems? Or you know, honestly, I like playing with this uh, instrument because I think it's actually kinda fun to check temperatures. I, have, I bought this little H, uh, this temperature gauge, this thermometer, so that I could see how the performance of my HVAC system was to see if there was a differential between what's coming out of my system versus what the actual temperature is. Maybe you just want to see how your water heater is performing. This is a really fun, I think it's a fun tool, honestly, to have so that you can, you know, somewhat accurately know the temperature of different things that you might be working on, whether that's HVAC related or plumbing or anything of the sort. Maybe another tool besides these is maybe a moisture meter. Maybe you have a lot of rodents in your house and you're worried about where they might be soiling the drywall or you're worried about water um, affecting maybe some of the woodworking projects you've got going on. So maybe a moisture meter is something to invest in. So I guess for number 15 here, it's kind of a miscellaneous one. What is something that you're interested in working on and what is a tool that you've seen maybe used by some seasoned experts or something that you think is gonna facilitate your job? Maybe it's as simple as getting a, a carpenter's square so that you can more accurately work on your uh, rough carpentry. Whatever it is, I say you can build off the 14 things prior that I've talked about and add the 15th to that spot. 
So regardless, I hope the video was helpful. Hopefully you learned something new. If you have any suggestions on what maybe you would add or take away, feel free to share it in the comment section below. Definitely interested to hear what you have to say or maybe some cool uses for tools that I've already mentioned that um, would be good to go over or maybe other tools that you found more useful than the ones I've suggested. Definitely happy to hear it and I do appreciate you watching. Catch you in the next video.